Hi there, welcome to my second video, so get up and start pumping. No, no, no. This kind of pumping. So in the previous video, I have explained what a peristaltic pump is, how it works, and I've also shown how to create a digital version of a stepper motor. I also created the initial design of the rotor. All this for my peristaltic pump, which is part of a much bigger series of a cocktail machine. So if you haven't seen it, please check it out. I really like to receive feedback so I can improve my videos. And if you do like them, please give a like and subscribe. It really helps me grow and create more content for you. I know in my previous video I've promised to finish up the design and also create the first prototype. And we are definitely going to do that. But what I missed in my previous video was some more explanation in why I chose some design decisions. And I thought that would really help and make the video more interesting. And because of this, um, I'm going to start redesigning the complete rotor again. And from there, continue on with the body of the pump and do the actual assembly. So I hope you agree. If not, please let me know. Now with the stepper design complete, um, we can create the rotor and the rotor contains three 608 bearings. So let's first digitalize the bearings that would help a lot uh, for creating the rotor. And the bearing is just a cylinder with a hole in it. And the inner diameter is eight millimeters and the outer diameter is 22. So now we can extrude it and let's measure the depth. It's seven. No, oh, it's the wrong one. We need to create a new body. So now we have a separate bearing and this should be a new component. So create component from body and we can call it a 608 bearing. And the bearing also has some nice chamfers. So let's see, it doesn't come too um, tight. Let's do half a millimeter. So we can select multiple, that one and that one. And let's do half a millimeter. So this is uh, the bearing which we can use to put, uh, create the rotor. So let's move it a bit out of the way. Okay. So now we have created a bearing and we can start working on the rotor. So in order to do this, I will use the stepper design. So we create a sketch on top of the shaft of the stepper and we project the D shape of the shaft. And I want it to fit really snug. So uh, we also need to give it an offset, but it should be not really big. So I just do 0.2. So we have a little bit of clearance, so it will fit, but it will still fit a bit tight, hopefully. It always depends a bit on how uh, well calibrated my machine is, my 3D printer that is. So now we have the the hole defined for the shaft, um, but we need to still fit three uh, 608 bearings. So let's check, um, let's draw a line from the center to the top. And we want to know how much, um, yeah, we need to check how far we want it to be from the, the shaft. So we should make everything as small as possible. That would be uh, the most efficient. Um, so from there we can define the, the distance from the bearing to the shaft. Let's make it five millimeters and I think that's already a bit too big. So let's make it three. And from there we now know that the bearing size is eight. So when we do, uh, sorry, 22. So when we do 22, we now know that the bearing will fit in here. So in the middle of the line, here is the, the center of the bearing. Um, then, yeah, we can, so this is the point where we need to uh, draw the cylinder, which will fit the bearing. So if the inner diameter is eight, um, we want it again to fit a little bit um, and we want to have a press fit. So we need it, need to make it a bit bigger so we can make it for example 8.2. I hope that these clearances are, are correct but we'll see. And now this will be the first cylinder but um, it still needs to be attached to the shaft. So what we can do from here is um, what is nice. Yeah, we can do an offset and let's define three millimeters. And 
from there we can go down all the way to the center same thing for this side and go back. so here we have um, one arm for the um, bearing and now we can rotate it or maybe, um, how do we say we can create a circular pattern so from there can we move this line we don't need that one and that one we also don't need that one and hopefully so this should be okay and we select the center point why doesn't it pick okay we'll gra just grab the center point from this uh, circle it should be fine and we say that we want it three times our four lock also interesting but we can start with three that would be better and cheaper of course so now we have um the base of the rotor which m will fit three arms and we can cut the inner sides so we only leave the profile a bit too much again too much okay so now we have this and we can constrain everything again so we press d for dimension make sure that this will always stay 820 and again 820 this distance should always be the same yeah i think it will be fine if we just move along so from here we can select our um base hopefully the inner ah oh, we removed the offset also <laughs> so let's again create offset of 0.2 and we can extrude so now it uh, has a little bit more room we also need to pick the the cylinders but now we can do um, we can extrude the the base and let's make it three millimeters thick and from there on we can again create a sketch but because there yeah we already defined the circles we can um, project it again and if you hold uh, the mouse if you press the mouse button and hold it you can select multiple faces so hopefully we can select the one I want but you need to enable sketches again which it is ah we need to uh, enable the sketch again that's what I said so we can project the circle again and from there extrude it I really like the project tool <laughs> so the bearing is seven millimeters thick so we need to do at least seven and let's leave room uh, with one millimeter on each side so let's make it nine um, but we are also creating a little cap um, and it should go in two millimeters so let's also do plus two and you have the dimensions uh, for the cap. so now let's give it a nice chamfer uh, here fill it in chamfer and do 0.5 again so now we have the base of the rotor and we can already um, connect the bearings to it but let's see if the body is correct yeah so this we call it um, the rotor base and we can attach a bearing to and from there so it's now nicely snug to the bottom and we said that we can give it um, which dimension is that one yeah we said one millimeter on each side that is perfect and we have put one on so now hopefully we can do the same thing as we did with the sketch and do a where are you pattern that's the one i was looking for and we can select a body or better a component the axis will be the center and now we have three bearings attached to the base great so now with the base and the three bearings complete we can close the um, we can close the rotor design with a nice little cap so i will start from um, the base again and create a sketch on the plane and let's project project the outer diameter of the cylinder and do an offset again of 0.2 so 0.2 now let's make it a bit wider five you can use the rotate or the circular pattern and again select that line do the center point there is no center point yet so we need to project it there and now we can rotate the sketch again uh, or in a sketch right yeah here yeah. circular pattern select the center point we project it and do a rotate again so we have now the three cylinders and we can project again the outer diameter of the base see which uh, why i think the projector was really powerful and this should be okay this should be okay we have a offset so we can 
fit it. And let's do the first extrusion. And we said that the other, that the base was three millimeters thick. So at two, um, we said that the base will go into the top um, with two millimeters. So let's do um, two millimeters. And from there, now we have an extrusion and we can do another extrusion on the plane and also select now the, okay, we need to project it first on the, so let's create a sketch again, reject plane. And now we can create an extrusion and also select the inner part and we can extrude it with one millimeter and now it's closed off. So if you now look, um, it's not connected directly, but it should have enough clearance to fit. It should still fit the shaft and I think it should be okay right now. So if we now do a uh, connection again and we can select, did we create it as a opponent? Let's see. So this is the rotor. And I think if we now go into the main place, do a joint, it should fit. If we say mode select, ah, it's a component. So did we create it as a component? No, not yet. The rotor cap would also be a component. So I think if we now, we said that, yeah, let's do the plane from there. Um, it's a bit hard to select, so we can just move it out of the way and do a joint, select that part, select that part, and now it is entered. Yeah, I like. Now the bearings did not move, that is a minor problem. So we also need to say that those are connected. <laughs> so we can say join and it will be that circle to this line and with a Z offset of one, the other way, no, minus one. I always struggle a bit with the uh, positioning. So I always experiment a bit and when it works, it works. <laughs> so you can see here and do a one the other way like this. So now we have the rotor design complete. I think it looks really nice. Uh, we can hide the sketch again and connect it to the shaft. So using that, we can do a select the top and the top of the shaft, flip it, no, okay. So now the rotor is uh, connected, but uh, I think if we do edit joint and do a motion, we can say rotate, it will also rotate nicely. That is perfect, yeah. And this is something we can use when animating everything. So now we have a nice rotor and we can use that to, um, yeah. The rotor will push against the the tubing and it needs to create a little vacuum so it will push against the wall of the the case and to create the case um, it's not that hard so we select uh, or we create a sketch on the um, the front face of the stepper motor let's hide the rotor for a little bit the bearings as well and we will project the stepper uh, front face and we can offset the bump of the stepper so otherwise it won't fit so it doesn't matter if it's too big so let's just do one millimeter that's fine um so i think this was exactly three millimeters and it's m3 but i want to give it a bit more space so i will also do an offset from here and we can select mm, what will be fine yeah, it should it should pull and connect nicely so let's do one millimeter and let's see what it is now um, spec uh, 2.56 that's really not that big i will just give it a um a real dimension delete and select d and let's make it over constraint no. okay let's get rid of the circle and let's select the circle and make it um, 3.5 also here 3.5 and here 3.5 and lastly 3.5 so now we have a uh, the base partially complete um i think it might be good to also create a circumference with the rotor already attached so we can add the bearing and the base maybe and i like to project the outer uh, diameter of the top bearing so we know where the top will be and we can hide it again and we can just do um, create a circle from the middle to the top so this is the dimension of the yeah here will exactly around this circle will be all the bearings when it's rotating so this is the start where it will start pushing 
Um, so now we can create the space to the wall and let's measure the, the tubing which is uh, six milli six and a half millimeters in diameter but we want it closed and pressed really nicely so it will uh, yeah, so it is able to create a vacuum and I think if we do it at 1.3, I don't need to push, push that hard, but it will close the tube fully. So 1.3. So this is the space where the bearing will push against the, the tubing against the wall with enough force, hopefully. That's something we need to experiment a bit. So now we can also uh, create an offset around that circle. Uh, you can only create one offset. <laughs> so let's just draw a circle then and offset that. Possible, unfortunately. Um, then I do it a bit differently. So let's just draw a line to the top and where it crosses it. So here uh, we set the space will be 1.3. And uh, then we can say that the uh, wall thickness will be what will be a nice two let's make the wall thickness two and then draw a circle to the top and to that line so now you can see a bit of the shape of the pump of the body of the pump of course and let's just extrude it we need, now need to select every part which we want to uh, which we want extruded uh, not that one not that one no is it is it selecting it doesn't seem like it. Okay, one to that one. I'm a bit curious. I created the, if this one will be extruded. Don't think so. so. I think this should be okay. How thick do we want it to be? That's something we now need to think of. Um, it depends. So here we have the screw and the screw when fully inserted. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, let's give it two millimeters thick and from there we need to hide the head of the bolt so if we draw a sketch again from there and then um, measure the circumference of the head and it's 5.5 5.5 right yeah so let's make it 5.6 so the same here and this will be the part where we can extrude it again and the thick the head is three millimeters thick so let's make it three and now this will be the place where the head will stay um yeah when the screw is fully inserted hopefully <laughs> so from here we can show the sketch again which we drawn earlier and project the wall not the correct sketch <laughs> draw a sketch on the top project again and select the wall and the outer diameter and from there we can do a extrusion again and determine how high it needs to be so i think that the height yeah should be maybe 15 millimeters it's good to experiment a little bit so this will be the first prototype so um when we print it we'll see immediately what went wrong I always like this approach. So here is the body of the pump and I think it should it, it should fit. Um, we have a part where the rotor will fit into. So let's check when we enable that one again. Shaft bearings and the rotor. Um, it should have enough space. So I'm not sure if this is correct. What is between one and two? The distance is 16 but we said 1.3 so something went wrong here um let's see i think in the last feature what did we select so here we have the line uh, let's see hmm. so from the line to that one is two how thick did um uh, this two that was okay and then from isn't this the line we wanted yeah 1.3 so from there i think we did the um, base a bit wrong so let's fix that in this sketch and draw a circle again to here yeah. now with the sketch enabled again we can select the feature and we don't want that one but we need to do it a little bit further on again because now the sketch is all wrong <laughs> i think from this one you can deselect the outer sketch no from even one before here remove the outer part and in this one the same it is already removed perfect now with the last sketch we remove the outer part and select the inner wall and i think when we now enable it 
height the sketches again and now we can check the dimensions and the distance is 1.8 am i doing it correctly uh, it's not measuring the correct one edge vertex yes ah uh, it takes the middle yeah <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, okay, it is correct. I selected the wrong uh, plane, so it's 1.3. That is good. So now with the design of the pump or the, um, how do we say, the body of the pump almost done, but yeah, yeah we can see that the height is not correct. So uh, well, let's extrude it, the walls a bit more and make it 30 maybe yeah from here you can see that it will uh, fit nicely so there's also another problem because if we do a mid plane mid plane from this face and this face and i think if you then yeah, that's correct and then do the plane and i think I usually do create a sketch and then do slice. You can see my uh, problem with this. So here you can see the rotor and it will rotate and this is the space where the tube will be. But when it's rotating, the whole, the tubing will move everywhere. So it might end up here or at the top. So we need to close this part off. So it might be good to do that. And we need to do that um, yeah, from here. It doesn't need to be too tight so we can just draw a square from here to here should be fine so okay let's finish the sketch and do a create a sketch on this plane again now we can select a circle and it should be uh, no project the outer the circumference of the top plate and we should be able to select this part and offset it again with uh, two millimeters it should be just around yeah the screw should still fit and it's there's no there's still enough room to push yeah i think this will be fine so from here we can do an extrusion again and we can select the bearing to the bearing yeah we should be from there yeah and yeah, it's a bit hard to see <laughs> but it should be okay. So we, we now, uh, I selected from here the circle to the bearing, but we still need to give it a bit of room and let's make it minus one. So now with that part complete, we can select the plane again, uh, create sketch and slice it to see what we did. Yeah. So here should, this should be the place where the tube will be and it has enough space to, um, to rotate the rotor but i think that this is too that the, the rotor is too high on the shaft so we need to move it a little bit closer to the stepper motor and we can do that by selecting the part where we connected it it's not, is it that one no where is it is it this one no i think we did that last so that one yeah let's give it a smaller offset of yeah to minus two so if we now look at the plane again uh where is the, the sketch i always do this create a new sketch so we end up with a lot of sketches and you can see that we are now uh, connected to it but it's a lot closer to the uh, stepper motor which is nice so we decrease the extrusion again uh, finish it up extrusion um, to object and select the bearing again hopefully i can select it i think this is okay and give it some room minus uh, to object we should be able to select the plane yeah oh, oh. this is interesting what did i do here <laughs> oh funny but this is not good so we need to edit again make it a distance why is it doing this yeah, i will remove it delete it and extrude outer dimension again and do two objects select the correct face of the bearing where are you this give it an offset of one millimeter and it should be fine so if we now look at the sketch and slice it up again we should have enough room so the rotor will um yeah so the, you can see here we have a press fit of the bearing onto the base cut the cap it has enough space on the shaft um the body will uh, yeah fit the stepper motor and it also has enough room from there and the how do you say the tubing has enough space to be pushed against the wall and hopefully the rotor will still rotate because if the push or the the yeah the pressure is too big the rotor won't rotate and that's is a problem but it's also a problem um, if the 
space is too big because then it won't uh, create a vacuum and it won't suck up the fluid from the bottom. So now I think we have our first design complete. No, there's still one thing we need to do. And we now have a rotor and we have a body, but the tubing can't uh, be inserted right now. So what I like to do is to create two holes where the tubes go into and I think I will create a plane again, a tangent plane, select it to here and it will be a flat plane on the uh, tangent of the outer diameter of the body and we can create a sketch on there like this. So now um, it would be nice if we can see a little bit of wireframe effects, camera, mesh display, visual stuff, shaded with hidden edges. Yeah, wireframe. So this is the part where it will push against the wall. So it's not fully at the side, but that's because it's not oriented that way. Um, but it should give us enough, um, how do you say, of an idea where to put our um, holes. So let's do a projection of the outside and hopefully we can also select the inner part. Yes, also create a projection and from there we need to create the holes. So we need to put it exactly in the middle. So let's draw a line here. Um, the wall should be yeah. what would be a good dimension. Let's measure a bit. I think uh, 1.5 maybe. 1.5 and then the outer diameter is uh, of the tubing is six, I think. Yes. So we need to make it six. And from there, we can create a circle, the mid, and we can also select outer part, which we defined. It. What was it? <laughs> Seven. Okay, yeah, I think this will be okay for now. So now we have the part which we can connect to the tube. Is that correct? Uh, I think it's not in the center. <laughs> Okay, so can we move it? That's always the problem when you don't constrain everything. <laughs> if you move it wrongly, it uh, will create a problem. But let's make it snug to this part. So let's do a dimension and constrain it to here. Uh, no dimension from there to here. Let me do that. Okay, so it's a bit freehanding now, but I'm just experimenting a bit. Or uh, 3.5. So now it will insert it at fully at the bottom. But there was still enough space, I think. Will this be okay? Ah, let's make it four. Then we can do an extrusion. So let's don't select the mesh again. So shade it the mesh and extrude it to the object here. Ah, this looks nice. So now we have that. And now we also need to move away the inner part. So to do that, uh, no, let's save it. Can I select that one? No. So let's make a sketch onto it, rotate it, and again, do a projection on the inner part. Okay, do a solid. Only select the inner part. Did it select it? No, that did not work well. <laughs> so let's edit the sketch. I'm wondering why I can't select the inner part. That is a bit strange. I created a sketch. I don't want to delete it. Do a profile of the inner part and do select it and do cut. I want it to cut. Why isn't it doing that? Now it will, yeah, it should select the correct plane. This is sometimes a bit strange why I can't do that. Delete. Can I do it from there? Okay, fine. An older sketch uh, will work apparently. So to object, do that and select. So I think when we now do OK, we can see the inner part. So you can see it will push from there to the sides. And we now have a nice input for the tubing. But for a peristaltic pump, it can, of course, also be an output. But now we just need to mirror it. Mirror. Select the body or feature, basically. And select the mid plane. And I think we created one earlier, which should be fine. So using that, we can just do, should be identical. Okay, we did it also cut, no. And that is because we did not select that feature as well. Hopefully I can just select that feature also. Can I do it from there? I think this will work. Yes, nice. So as you can see, now we have created the body of the pump. Uh, we can insert uh, a silicon tube from here. It goes around the rotor and goes back towards the output and the rotor is able to spin 
all the way from here and you can see that when we slice it up it still has enough space to push and to rotate um, it is able to contain three bearings and um, the base has a so it has a bit more uh, symmetrical pull <laughs> on each bearing which is uh, nice and gives it a bit more stability hopefully so let's finish up the sketch and uh, the design is done or the first prototype is done So with the designs ready, I've exported the three components to an STL file and we can load them up in Cura. And I will enable three supports and just leave all the defaults. So now we can slice it, preview it. Yeah, this looks fine. And let's print it. So we've now all the designs printed and uh, we can assemble the pump. So here we have uh, the, part, the bottom part of the rotor, uh, which will fit these three 608 bearings. And here is the top of the rotor uh, to close it off and to put it on the stepper shaft. We have three bolts to uh, connect the body of the pump to the stepper and we have some silicone tubing. Let's start assembling. Um, there were some supports still connected, so let's remove that. You can see that it is um, a pretty okay print. And we need to attach the body of the pump to the stepper motor. And as you can see, it, it slides directly over the, the little bump here, which is perfect. And let's see if all the holes align. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but they do. But I think the holes here are a bit too small. And it needs to fit these bolts and yeah, it's way too small. Um, but that's not a big problem. Um, let's see if the bearings will fit. So it's a <laughs> pretty tough fit. So it's, uh, we already see that the Cylinders were a bit too big, so we can make them smaller in the next design. But usually a hit with a hammer will help. So let's try that. One on there. <laughs> Two to go. Two on there. One left. That is free, but it still does not fit because it's <laughs> I can't hit any further with the hammer. But we can uh, make that uh, if we use a other hole. Yeah, it's really tight. So this one should wait then. So let's start assembling the pump. Um, that doesn't fit, so I'll have an all for that. So it doesn't matter too much if there's a little bit of room. But we can see. So here we have the hole. Let's make some room again here. A little bit here. Hopefully that is enough space. I don't think so. Let's try again. So let's see if we now put a bolt through. It needs to get a grip. Yeah. Yes. The other one on the other side. For testing purposes, I think that is enough. Push a bit right now. So 
Now with the bolts inserted, we can attach it to the stepper motor, hopefully. From there it is everything, yes. So let's see the other side, move it a little bit through, put it in the wall, this is straight. Yeah, I pushed in the bolt a bit crooked. I think this will be okay. Now on this side it won't fit. I think it is getting a grip now. Yeah, side a bit. Yeah, so it seems to be fitting quite decently. So if we make the holes a bit bigger and maybe the distance or recheck the distance between the holes and we can make it work but now it's a really good fit so that's perfect and we still need to get those a bit more down so let's see what i can use i need something around which i can hit on <laughs> i think so i think this will be okay it's now a bit more over it and if we now put it on yeah, it is better but as you can see the top part uh, is a fit is way too loose so we need to make that a bit uh, smaller but I do like the fact that it's really tight on the shaft so maybe I will keep that dimension I think this would be okay so if we now put the top on so we can insert the rotor into the onto the shaft Let's see if that will fit yeah perfect put it all the way down rotates nicely this is put a bit more down so we put it now all the way down but i think we need to raise it a little bit so maybe put some so the top part is on, we now need to raise it again. I think it is gliding over the bolt, so maybe we need to tighten it a bit more. So it is rotating, not the best. So I think if we make the bump hole a bit bigger, we can also uh, go underneath it with a screwdriver. So now there is not much room to lift it, so hopefully it doesn't break it's bumping against something so i do think that it yeah accidentally pushed it all the way down so now i can't lift it very easily so that is something we need to fix in the next design yes okay i was able to lift it a bit but damaged the side a little bit but this is going to be okay -ish. let's see if we can insert the hose or the tubing i mean can rotate it yes put it out and insert it back to the other hole can use it all maybe to get it all the way back yeah so this one also broke that was a bit too thin <laughs> so this is how we learn but I think for the first prototype it already looks pretty promising so let's get a and pull the tube through now we can rotate it and i think it will get a grip now yeah almost done put it down push it down. and we can see the idea we need to move, try to move it all the way down so it will have the best grip so there's still um i think there the walls are too thin so we need to make that a bit bigger and the do have room on the bottom where it should be the bearings are pushing against so that is okay but at the top there it can still walk away so that is something we do not like and which needs to be fixed but okay so in this position there's a fully closed loop yeah this is okay so we might already see something pumping hopefully <laughs> and so here's a glass with water and hopefully if we insert side of the tube or the input maybe let's rotate it 
see if it will suck up a bit. I think. Here you can see already a bit of water. If I turn it hard enough. Yes. There will is water. So when I rotate it now, you can see it pumps water from the glass. And if I continue rotating it, it will pump. And that's perfect. So we need to make some improvements uh, with the um, to get the tube fully inserted um, or enclosed. <laughs> that's the better word. And we need to make the input and output a bit thicker and the side walls. The walls also need to be bigger and the holes. So I think, yeah, and the top shaft. So now it's perfect. If I now push it very slowly, and I think we need to make it push a little bit harder against the wall, because now it's not a fully enclosed circle. Can't create a full vacuum yet, so that is will be a bit of a problem. In the best situation, we need to have it um, <clears throat> all the way around. It needs to be pushed on and. If you blow on it, there can't be any air escaping. That would be best. So let's uh, try to fix that in the next design. Whoa, you've made it all the way to the end. So thank you for your attention. And I hope to see you in the next video where I will be fixing the problems in my current design and do the tests, reprint it and do some more experimenting with the updated prototype. So hope to see you there and until next time, bye bye.